Good morning, Pastor Mercer here with you for your daily devotion for September 16th. Uh, today we'll read a portion of Psalm 108, verses 1 through 6, and then we'll turn our attention to Colossians chapter 3. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My heart is steadfast, O God. I will sing and make melody with all my being. Awake, O harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is great above the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth, that your beloved ones may be delivered. Give salvation by your right hand and answer me. Colossians chapter 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them. But now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Slaves, Obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ, for the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong he has done, and there is no partiality. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fallen earth should not be our focus, dear saints. Certainly, you know, we can't, we can't lock ourselves in a room somewhere or, for that matter, uh, go off into a monastery that never worked. Uh, Luther knew, this, found out that that just didn't work. Uh, we, can't, we can't cut ourselves off from the world. We live in the world. Uh, but... Our, our minds, as Paul is telling us here, our minds should be set on things above and not on things that are on earth. And if I could just jump ahead here for a minute in this reading, reading. the question may be then, how do we do that? Well, when you look then at 16, he says, 
when we, we let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Dwell on God's word. Uh, come to church regularly. Be a part of church. Come to the divine service so that you can receive all the benefits and the gifts that God has for you uh, here when you come and assemble with other believers. And then he goes on, this is more baptismal language, but then we put on as God's chosen ones. This is putting on that new, that, that righteousness that has been imputed upon us by Christ. This is all of these things and these these virtues uh, here that uh, we see that uh, these the list here that Jesus' life fills us with these with all of these things that we see listed here, rather than than um, being concerned with other things and with vices and uh, and then you and I are also able to be a blessing to others, living out our lives, our baptismal lives, and then. Uh, loving our neighbors as ourselves. Paul goes on here then too to uh, describes uh, what orderly relationships look like when he's talking about the family, uh, the family unit, that is, that is uh, the wife. She's to submit uh, to, her, to her husband um, to, to, in order that things will be orderly. The husband uh, then... Uh, he's to love his wife and not be harsh with them, you know, and we get even more of this. Paul unpacks this even more in Ephesians 5 where he really, really tells the husbands then what that is, is that the husbands are to love their wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Children, fourth commandment, obey your parents in everything. Fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. And slaves, that is, workers, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters. Don't give eye service. Work. Uh, work with sincerity of heart. And in so doing, uh, fearing the Lord, it says here. Whatever you do, work heartily, as for the Lord and not for men. Boy, that, uh, that can really change, I suppose, uh, how many us sometimes feel about our feel about our work and our various vocations thinking about that dwell on that that we should work and work heartily as unto the Lord and and not unto men all right there was a lot of great things Colossians this is this is so good um, but a reminder to you again dear saints as we read this that Put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, all of these things. Above all of these, Paul says, put on love which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Dear saints, we have so much to be, of, 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 to be grateful that Jesus Christ would die when I look at myself, that he would die for a sinner like me, for a mess like me, that he loved, he loved me so much that he died for me on the cross. And you know what? He did that for you too. He suffered and died for you. This is the great love that God had for us that came into the flesh for us. God in the flesh came and suffered and died on a cross so that you and I could be free from sin, death, and the devil. Thanks be to God for that. Finally, the fourth part of uh, holy baptism. What does such baptizing with water indicate? It indicates that the old Adam in us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all sins and evil desires and that a new man should daily emerge and rise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. Where is this written? St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 6, We were buried with him through baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live 
a new life. We pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day, this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, uh, have a good rest of your day. Remember that you remember your baptism. Uh, I pray that uh, this day would be a day of of uh, rejoicing, thankfulness, uh, gratefulness uh, to God as you, as you realize the great gift that you have, that he won salvation for you by dying and rising, dying on the cross and rising again. And he delivered those gifts to you, um, that he won that for you, that salvation for you there on the cross and delivered to you in the waters of your baptism. Well, have a great day, a blessed day. And I will see you again soon.